Yeah. Yes. Uh, if we can disconnect that one more pandit, that will be nice. Yeah. Prabhu, speak now. Okay. So here is your letter. So we have three Prabhu on on the phone with me. Um, he is driving. Unfortunately, uh, I mean, uh, he cannot join us. Uh, but yes, I, I have him on the phone, and hopefully, we can uh, uh, all devotees can hear. Okay. So this is a letter, Prabhu. Uh, three Prabhu. I am reading it. This is March fourth, nineteen seventy three. Where Shri Prabhupada uh, has written to you, my dear Trayadas, please accept my blessings. I beg to acknowledge receipt of your nice report dated the twentieth of February, and I have carefully examined the contents. Your plans for increasing book distribution are very good. If so many books are being sold, then very soon we will be finished the second edition. Distribution of all these books is making a firm basis for our movement. the educated gentleman you mentioned who has now become a nice devotee should develop into a very good preacher your policy of encouraging his chanting is good gradually krishna consciousness is developed that is natural that london doctor that keshava mentioned to rupanuga maharaj is bogus depend on krishna and consult a general doctor nobody can guarantee life it is a little hellish but without krishna nobody can be a saint or relieved from distresses regarding pyari mohan ramacharya and nanda devi dasi taking second initiation if you recommend that's all right but now they must keep very clean and never uh, break the regulated principles purity is the force and if the people in general notice that we are clean both inside and outside that is to our credit regarding your last question yes you may call their lordships radha gopi vallabha now i have enclosed three sacred threads duly chanted by me in rupanuga maharaj's absence you may obtain a tape prabhu can you go down or oh, this is the last one oh uh, uh, and instructions uh, from bali mardan maharaj in new york and hold on and hold one fire sacrifice hoping this letter meets you in good health so prabhu try prabhu i think in this letter i think uh, Uh, Shri Prabhupada has given the deity's name, uh, Shri Shri Radha Gopi Vallabha. Yes, this is a this is a letter where Prabhupada gave gave the name for the deity's Radha Gopi Vallabha. Many people wonder why didn't he say Radha Gopi Jana Vallabha, but Prabhupada wrote there that name Radha Gopi Vallabha. So, <laughs> yeah, that is that is their their name given by Shri Prabhupada personally. Yes, and that was yeah. Yes, Prabhu, please. After installation, yeah. Just because we are, we are. As Prabhat, Prabhat had not given them a name at the time. They were brought in Krishna, but because we asked through the Prabhat, because we saw that many others had a dwarf uh, dish, and so we just asked in a letter to the Prabhat one of the questions. Actually, this letter has many instructions. Because at least when I was that short time that I was there, two or three, three years, because our main emphasis book distribution had just started, and so it started in '71, '72, in in a big way in America, among the devotees, and um, I had been there with Keshava Prabhu and Budi Manta, who had started in San Francisco. So when Keshava got to Boston. <laughs> He invited me. There was some problem with the president at the time, and then he invited me to come there to be the president, especially for um, pushing book distribution, which we we all knew was so dear to Sri Prabhupada. And so that's where was our main concentration. And all the devotees, uh, myself, and all the devotees, we all that was our main emphasis on book distribution. But at the same time, thanks to <coughs> Sumati Devi, Nasi Swai, so you already interviewed such a wonderful Vaishnavi, a very great devotee. She carried out her practically almost single-handedly. There was other devotees who were cooking for her. She she had a copy balab, but she was especially dressing and doing all the puja every day, and so she was carrying on. And seeing that the deity worship was going on nicely, and we were primarily concentrating on that, on book distribution, reaching new people coming to the temples. A number of devotees joined, and, and um, the 
there's Narendra Maharaj and, and others. Oops. I don't have earphones or anything, just have the cell phone up holding in my hand. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, and Italian cars are not automatic shifts, so it makes it a little more complicated. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. So that's a, I thought that was one of our one of my favorite letters because there's so many instructions there, even about Ayurvedic medicine. Prabhupada followed Ayurvedic medicine, but he was cautious about the Ayurvedic doctors, and he generally told devotees just go to the regular doctor. And uh, depend on Krishna, as, as he explained in this letter. Because, as you know, there's to find a, a real, authentic Ayurvedic doctor and to be able to follow the whole lifestyle is not so easy in the West or, or in Kali Yuga in general. So he gave that instruction. And uh, also, about second initiation was also interesting. The importance of cleanliness, the importance. There's another letter where he says, I think it was in this letter or another letter where he said, Prabhupada said that it's not necessary to automatically recommend just because it already has been, been around for another six months after taking initiation, first initiation, unless they are following strictly all the, the whole, all the sadhana practices to recommend them for second initiation. It's not an automatic. <clears throat> so, yeah. Like I said, that was one of my favorite letters. This was a letter where the deities are given the name by Srila Prabhupada. And um, devotees took second initiation, you know, Nanda Devi, she was uh, she became she was the president for some time in Alantra. That's the same Nanda Devi and Pyari Mohan, of course, you know. Yes, so they were they were devotees who were there when I arrived. We were already there present in uh, in Boston. Kari Mohan, Nanda Devi, Maturesh, um, also, what's his name? I can't remember, Ramachari was there. Yeah, yeah, Ramachari. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Ram he left many years ago. I'm not sure if anybody's ever heard from him again. But he did wonderful service. He was our best book distributor, actually. And, um, then he went off, he went with the Radhadamadar party, as did many, including myself. So, do you want to read another letter? Yes, bro. I was there for some time. The first letter, I, the first letter maybe you already read about when I, when I had first arrived, and I but that I was there, and I had become the taken that service as a president. Yeah, one minute. Yeah, you one minute. Prabhupada especially encouraged preaching to the universities. Prabhupada it was very, very important. Important to Srila Prabhupada, and there are many letters in this regard, especially to temples where, like in Berkeley, Boston, cities where there were big universities. Prabhupada was especially uh, desirous of preaching to the university students because he said that. They can become leaders of the movement. They're, they're more intelligent and can take responsibility to become leaders of the movement. So that was very important for Srila Prabhupada. And uh, I think that's the very important service there in Boston, especially as being one of the oldest and biggest university cities in, in the country. So I think it was. And Prabhupada said another letter, he said also to flood, flood the. First, he said in Berkeley, when I was in Berkeley, he said to flood the city with our, our books, with Srila Prabhupada's books, especially in the city where there are many students. So, same goes for Boston. Yeah. To flood the city with transcendental literature so the intelligent class of men can study and understand Srila Prabhupada's books and, and change the change the destiny of the society by taking seriously studying and understanding and, and putting into practice with Prabhupada's teachings. Yes. What is, can you hear me? Can you hear Prabhu? Hare Krishna, do you I can hear you. No, no, I'm asking them. I'm asking them. Can you hear, hear, hear uh, Trai Prabhu speaking, everyone? 
सुमती माताजी प्रभु नतराई प्रभु सुमती माताजी इज आल्सो ऑनलाइन सुमती माताजी वर यू एबल टू हियर हिम यस आई कैन हियर हिम वेरी वेल ओके ओके फाइन फाइन आई थिंक या ही कैन यस प्रभु यू आर ऑडिबल यू आर ऑडिबल टू मेनी पीपल एनी नेगलेक्ट योर ऑफेंसेस आई माइट हैव मेड इट इन दोस डेज ड्यू टू माय इमेच्योरिटी एंड लैक ऑफ कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस You talking to me? In the temple in the service of Shri Shri Radha Gopi. Okay, is that is is he was speaking to you? He was addressing you, Sumati Mati. Oh, I didn't hear because his voice is sometimes breaking up. I didn't understand that. ओके Oh, okay. Um, one minute. I'll. I have to do something. Okay, from my phone. This one minute. Hare Krishna Manav Prabhu can I read a letter during the time Gidhar Prabhu, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So let me. Uh, okay. I'm going to read Trai Prabhu. This one. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Hold on. Is it connecting? Okay. Trai Prabhu. Prabhu, can I call? Uh, can I do an international call, or should I just? We are okay with. Uh, Okay, 
Trey Prabhu, I think you're you're getting disconnected. Is it uh, will it be better if I call you international? Like you know, if I call you on a normal phone. Hari bol, Trey Prabhu. Oh. Yeah. Um so dear devotees just hold on for a couple of minutes I think. Uh, um yeah Prabhu is is engaged in many services. He's in Italy and he's going to uh like you know for some service. uh so just hold on hold on for a couple i hope uh prabhu can you hear me i uh, just hold on let me call him on the international phone sure hopefully that that will work yeah and uh, he apologized because he forgot and uh, yeah so just uh, so things happen okay Trey Prabhu, it's okay. Uh, I I'm, I've called you international. Like now, I made an international call. So let's let, uh, let's let's continue now. Are you able to hear me? Hear me? There's, there's a little piece where I am right now that's in between two mountains. Dry, I'm driving, and in about one minute, I'll be out of it, and I'll probably the connection will be a little better. Okay, okay. Then that's fine. We can. Uh, but let's let's resume. This is this is much much better now. Okay, so I'm going to read this letter. Yeah, I, I can hear you better now. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, let's let's see. I think oh, I, hopefully everybody will also hear you properly. I'm I'm reading now. Okay, uh, please. Uh, in, case, in case in the next few seconds things go out, just wait. I won't want to get through this this area. It'll be better. Okay. Okay. No problem, bro. No problem. That's fine. Yeah, that is fine. Okay, Giridhar Prabhu, were you able to hear everything what Tare Prabhu said? Uh, yes, Prabhu, I was able to hear. Yeah. Okay. So let let me read this. Okay, I'm reading a uh, Prabhu. Date July nineteenth, nineteen seventy three. Dear Trayadas, please accept my blessings. I beg to acknowledge receipt of your special delivery letter of July seventeenth, nineteen seventy three, and I have carefully examined the contents. I am glad to hear from you that everything is in order at your at our Boston temple, and that the house is is nearing completion in repairs and rehabilitation. this will very much increase the prestige of our boston center so that respectable people will come and sit and hear about krishna consciousness please do not worry regarding some rumors that were being circulated here by outsiders about the boston iskon temple i can understand the actual position from your letter so please push on with all programs as you are doing krishna consciousness is factually the only solution to all the suffering which is besetting fellow humanity and all living entities so we have a great responsibility we have great responsibilities in discharging our duties in devotional service i am enclosing one brahmin thread chanted on by me for mathuresh das you may play the tape of me speaking gayatri mantra into his right ear and instruct him in the duties of brahmin we have to be real brahmins not just in name and in that way we can set an example for the whole civilized society to follow you are ever well wisher ac bhakti vedanta swami this is this is when we were still in 14 north beacon street yes And when we had we had come there, I got that the the building was quite a mess. <laughs> uh, it was it wasn't so bad, but there were a lot of repairs to be done. A lot of windows were broken. There were a number of things to repair. And we had made a contract with some contracting company to do the repairs. And so I reported to Baba that we had repaired it, and he was very happy. That he was very concerned that the temple was very respectable, uh, well kept, and um, well maintained uh, building. The building and the temple, so the people would respectable people would come. But not many young people, myself included, were coming from the, the alternative generation, uh, the generation. 
but it wasn't a problem that was only interested in those kind of people. People wanted all, the Alpha wanted all kinds of people, and also respectable people, professional people, all, all to come to Christian consciousness. So he was very concerned that naturally respectable people would appreciate a respectable building and a uh, well kept building. So we had done those repairs on the 40 North Beacon Street property and probably some places were done. And it, as far as the other thing goes, it was the father of Sarmista, I think it was. And now I think I remember Sarmista. She was one of, one of the three ladies who lived at the temple. Boston Temple at the time, I don't know now, but at the time it was famous as a mostly all dormitory temple. It was all dormitories. <clears throat> and we were not so famous for taking care of so well of the ladies, I guess. I think the father. But I mean, you Sumadi could say if it was so bad or not, I don't know. I'm not sure. But uh, I think this this devotee, I don't know where whatever happened to her. I think her father became very upset at that time. Just the life in the ashram, the temple. And there were, like I said, there were only many three ladies there at the time, from a Chardinus. And so he, he complained to Prabhupada, and somehow he complained to Prabhupada. And so I, I explained the situation. And just like people couldn't understand in those days, they couldn't understand ashram life, sleeping on the floor, austerities, getting up early, uh, taking a shower, a cold shower every day. So these things are, especially for the parents of many young people, they were quite upset about that. So. His father in particular complained to Prabhupada. Prabhupada always defended the president of the temple. And I have to say that Prabhupada was always very, very encouraging to this temple presidents and encouraged them, even though up until today that, that tendency is there. Somebody's always going to criticize the temple president, anybody who has a leadership position. And Prabhupada would always defend them. Prabhupada would always appreciated any devotee who was taking responsibility uh, in any any way for pushing on this movement and he would stand behind it even though people maybe made even legitimate complaints um, surely we would have done better like i said we were all in our early 20s quite immature with no experience but top but appreciated and encouraged very strong this letter shows that top despite the uh, criticism of the father of this devotee, Papa stood behind his temple presence. Of course, he would correct them if you're doing anything, anything out, out, not following the principles, not doing things correctly. But, but uh, he would always take the side of the temple presence. Because he said there was one instance that in, um, down in, I think in New Orleans or somewhere, where a temple person had this, or some discrepancies. But this temple person had done a lot of service to uh, open the temple, I think. And it was a nice temple. And but Bob had even said, they said the dogs will bark, but the caravan will go on. So. <laughs> Sometimes you would defend in a very stronger type of person. He said, at least you're doing something. At least you're doing something. The ones who are criticizing generally, they're not doing so much for the mission of Shri Prabhupada. So he would defend them. And we were in so many faults with it. I made so many mistakes. I would have made all, these, all the things that did wrong. So many. On top of it, very encouraging to any devotee who would take responsibility and uh, put himself out on the line and sacrifice things for helping him in his mission. I think that shows from this letter. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. So, Prabhuji. Um, uh, um, if those those who haven't um, been able to uh, hear, maybe. Uh, uh, Clearly, Prabhuji was explaining that the uh, the 
I mean, the incident which happened in uh, ISKCON Boston at uh, 40 North, Bo- North Beacon Street. There were less brahmacharis. I can't, really, I can't hear you very well now. Uh, no, I'm I'm explaining to other these all uh, devotees, other other devotees. Yeah, whatever you said, just just in a short, I'm trying to just like you know, in a just I'm just trying to explain to them so that they get they get a, a hold of what what you have said just now. So uh, Trai Prabhu has said that there was a Mataji, uh, probably her name was Sharmista, and uh, her father was concerned about the all the facilities that uh, we had at the temple at 40 North Beacon Street for the for the Brahmachari. Because that time most of the uh, devotees were all brahmacharis, so that's why he has he has sent this. Uh, 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 but Tri Prabhu has mentioned this to Chushla Prabhupada, and there was a lot of criticism about that because you know there was not good facility for brahmacharis, and um, so that's that's the that's the thing which is mentioned in the uh, in the letter, and Chushla Prabhupada has uh, has backed. As he was, he was backing uh, the temple president, and uh, Trai Prabhu was saying that uh, Shri Prabhupada always, um, always backed the temple presidents. So that's what uh, in just uh, uh, Trai Prabhu has said. So let us uh, go on to the next one. So Trai Prabhu, I just, I just in short, just explain to like all the devotees what you have said. So I'm, I'm reading the next letter, Prabhu. Okay. I can hear you very well now. Okay. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, but okay. okay, yeah, okay. I'm I'm reading you. I'm reading it now. My dear Traida, okay. My dear Traidas, this is letter from July 31st, 1973. Please accept my blessings. I beg to acknowledge a receipt of your letter dated July 13th, 1973. I am glad to hear that the Boston t- Temple is looking up. Enclosed, please find one mantra and thread duly chanted upon by me. Hold a fire ceremony and distribute prashadam. I hope this letter meets you well. Your well wisher, your ever well wisher, AC Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, Sriman Traidas Adhikari, 40 North Brecon Street, Boston, Massachusetts, 02134. His preaching in India had gone back to India at the end of 1970 and started vigorous preaching in India because before that there were no Iskan temples uh, established. And um, so Baba was giving initiation. Uh, what we would say now during the lockdown, some spiritual masters gave initiation online on Zoom. At, at that time, Srila Prabhupada, also myself, I received initiation by from Srila Prabhupada on, uh, by, by mail, Prabhupada would receive a letter of request and that he would chant on the beats, he would send the beats, or he would send the the, um, Brahman thread and he would chant on the Brahman thread and then he would send it with the the guy at Chivancha. And then then, uh, the temple president, which is is the real meaning of, if any of you have heard of the word Ritvik, the real meaning of the word Ritvik is that, that you would just be the priest. I was. I did it a few times. All those letters where they're initiation means that that as as a priest, I would did the ceremony and uh, did the initiation. But it wasn't that I was giving initiation. It was on the actual Prabhupada was giving the initiation, but he wasn't physically present. So one of these devotees would do the ceremony, do the fire sacrifice, the prayer, and um, give the beads or give the mantra. Probably would have to listen to the mantra of your guide. Record and sign it. And uh, that's how probably it was the first time in history that, uh, that the Krishna consciousness movement was on an international scale. It should have probably been the spiritual master of the whole international society for Krishna consciousness all over the world. Devotees were coming and becoming devotees and wanted to take initiation uh, all from all parts of the world. And Prabhupada was very busy at that time uh, preaching in India. So he started the system, which was, of course, new new in history to give initiation on the uh, deal. That's how many devotees took initiation. Shiva Prabhupada at that time. All those devotees you see on the list, although there's so many names. 
Hagarani, Nanshara, Shakesh, Nanshara, and other letters. And uh, we all took initiation like that. But they had the temple, the temple president, myself at the time, and he did it at the ceremony, fire sacrifice, and gave the bees or gave the mantra. That's so prophet. That's so prophet organized the international movement for Krishna consciousness. Yeah. That was the shortest letter. <laughs> yeah, yes. So let me go on to the next one. Uh, Prabhu, uh, let's, let's, yeah. move, let's move. Okay. I'm reading the next letter, Prabhu. Can you hear me, Atrai Prabhu? Yeah, yeah. Okay. September 4th, 1960. Okay. Okay. Let me do one thing. Yeah. Uh, September 4th, 1973. Mr. Mr. Dear Trai, please accept my blessings. I beg to acknowledge receipt of your letter dated August 30, 1973. The two boys are gladly accepted by me on your recommendation, their names are as follows. Ronald Kamalasan Das and Peter Prithu Shrava Das. Please give them good instructions regarding our Krishna consciousness philosophy and hold a fire ceremony and distribute nice prasadam to all the devotees. I hope this letter meets you well. Your ever well-wisher, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. This is still at 40 North Beacon Street. Sriman Traidas Adhikari. Uh, just to everybody, Prithu Shrava Prabhu is going to speak on uh, August 7th uh, on Saturday. So we have invited him. So he'll be also. Here in the Chicago. His last time he was in the Chicago area, preaching many, many years. It's wonderful. They've already been right at that time. And uh, he and his wife, Donna Kaley, Yeah, Kamalasan Das. Ronald. Ronald Kamalasan Das. I met him many years ago. I hadn't seen him in many years, and then I met him in Berkeley. I was out visiting my family some years ago, maybe 10 years ago, and I met him. I also met him in Punjabi one time. So I'm not sure where he's going. Okay. Yeah. He lives in the area of San Francisco, Berkeley. Prabhu, on the, on the bottom there is written, beads may be sent uh, to Kirtananda Swami for obtaining, uh, for uh, something. That was for getting the, getting the, the tape with the guy at Chimantra. And sometimes Papa would have, instead of mailing the beads, he would have the senior devotee like Kirtananda Swami chant on the beads. And that's that's also. Awesome. Uh, Hare Krishna, Nagarubha. I think you're muted if you are speaking. Adjustments. So it's like we had to make adjustments in this last couple of years to preach Krishna consciousness online and uh, give initiations online. So Prophet started that, gave that example by giving initiations to the male and empowering some of his disciples to chant on the beads. So many things. That's the nature of a char a charya. He can make it, make adjustments according to time, place, and circumstance but to spread Krishna consciousness. That's what Prabhupada did. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Uh, so, should we read the next letter, Tarei Prabhu? Okay. Should we read the next letter? Sure. 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 Okay. Okay. Prabhu, uh, okay. So I'm reading the next letter. Uh, this is dated December 8, 1973. My dear Traidas, please accept my blessings. I am in receipt of your letter, dated December 2nd, 1973. Thank you very much for pushing on 
our book distribution program so enthusiastically kindly offer all the devotees there my deepest gratitude for their wonderful service in this connection i understand from karandar that you are one of the most staunch supporters and workers for distributing our books and i assure you that it is the highest service to my guru maharaj thank you very much i hereby accept the devotees you have recommended as my duly initiated disciples and their names are as follows edward s basu gopal das donald narendra das ernest nitya siddha das gary krishna charan das krishna krishnarchan das michael yeah budhara das edward a harigada das rita a govind vallabha dasi rupanuga maharaj may chant their beads take good care of them all and always be an example for them to follow in krishna consciousness i hope this meets you well your ever well wisher ac bhaktivedant swami shilap propal is con boston Yeah, that was one of my favorite brothers, grandfathers. So I'm pleased with our book distribution. That was our, that was our emphasis. I didn't really, I didn't really know anything about management. I was, I think, I was about by that time maybe twenty, all of twenty-two years old. Yeah, twenty-two years old. And uh, just out of just in a, finished high school and uh, moved into the temple, and so I had no. No material experience whatsoever, <laughs> and uh, but I, I was convinced that if we just all go out and distribute Prabhupada's books, then he'll be pleased, and this movement will spread, and everything will happen from that. So we just concentrated on that, and we, and we received so many blessings from Shri Prabhupada because of that by just concentrating on that service as most important. The Prophet said in this letter, "It's the highest service to distribute the glories of the Lord, especially in this form, distributing Shri Prabhupada's books." So I was, I guess, that's one of my favorite. Well, that one, and I think maybe the next one, my favorite letters. It was so encouraging about the importance of distributing and how pleased he was by us distributing his books. Hmm. Mm. And also the importance of the example of the devotees. Anyone who's a leader, president, or any kind of leader in the movement, of sports, is a good example. Devotees are devotees follow the example more than what just what you say, but they follow your example. So what's been a good example? That's the most powerful preaching. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you for the wonderful. Yeah, so I will read the next letter, Prabhu. Okay. Uh, this is from Hong Kong Hilton. Shri Prabhupada is writing on February first, nineteen seventy-four. AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, dear Trai Das, please accept my blessings. In his last GBC report, Rupanuga Maharaj wrote that you are delinquent. in sending him regular reports the system of temple presidents sending twice monthly reports to the gbc was devised by me to facilitate my receiving news of all the centers through the gbc you are free to write me directly when the occasion arises but do not neglect to send regular reports to rupanuga maharaj i hope everything is going well in the boston temple and i will be glad to see you at our mayapur meeting you are ever well wisher ac bhakti vedanta swami because i was back for the filling out because papa devised the system by that time that all the temple for each temple president would send a report a monthly report to his gbc This is actual GBC responsible for his temple. The Prabhupada would gather all the, the 
the GBC would get, put together all those reports from the different type of you, you, you don't need any of the reports of Alpha and how the zone, how yeah. things are going in the zone. So because I was not very good at administrative things, I, I became neglectful and so proper. Grupa Luga complained, I guess, to Papa and Papa chastised me, which was very good for me. That's very for the for the disciple or encouragement or chastisement or what it's all so pleasing. But the spiritual master is recognizing your service and correcting us. It's good. That was a special mercy. As I was very proud by letter, so it's, it's, it's there for all history. My, my neglect in administrative duties to writing reports. Yeah. Yeah. So almost at my destination, so I can stop the car and uh, finish. Okay, yes. Prabhu, uh, let's go to the next letter. Okay. Let's bro. Let's uh, hold on, hold on. I think, yeah. Okay, my dear, uh, this is May twenty seventh, nineteen seventy four. My dear Traidas, please accept my blessings. I beg to uh, acknowledge receipt of your letter dated April twenty fifth, nineteen seventy four. Upon your recommendation, I have accepted Neil Byers as my initiated disciple, and his new spiritual name is Niranjana Das. Please keep him carefully now. Krishna consciousness means to create ideal men. So you must set the example in following the rules and chanting Hare Krishna mantra and see that others are doing it also. I am enclosing Brahmana threads and Gayatri mantra for Adi Keshava Das and Vivasvan Das. You must be very careful before you award the Brahminical thread by recommending a man to me. Now that we are dividing our society into the four orders as much as possible it is not that every man has to be made a brahman after a year especially if one cannot even get up early and go to mangalarti he cannot become a brahmana so consider it carefully before you recommend further men to me sometime in the past rupanugam haras reported that you were not sending him regular reports so he could compile his gbc report to me please cooperate with him in this, so our huge organization can run smoothly in all its parts. In all its uh, parts, your ever well wisher A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. So I got another reminder <laughs> of the importance of the monthly reports. I thought that's very kind. Chastised me again. So, um, if that's one thing good that happened is one one ideal man came out of the whole program there. <laughs> the Ranjan Swami. So Krishna gave us one ideal man came from that preaching there in Boston at that time. Mm. So it's interesting that the Prophet said that specific because because there were other letters where he gave the initiation to some devotees, but he didn't say this the importance of uh, creating ideal men by, by giving a good example. Because because I must have known that this this disciple would become an ideal man. I follow him strictly I follow him strictly his instructions for his whole since he came to Krishna consciousness, he's always strictly followed and brahmachari and sannyas, never deviated, uh, never come, always strictly fully Krishna conscious. So, in fact, if I can get his blessings, then that will be my one, one good thing that happened when I was there. So, somehow Maharaj became, became devotee that time. Yeah, especially the Lord you preached to him, especially at that time, was named Keshiva, who's no longer with us. He's left, left his body in a few years, a couple of years ago, a few years ago. But he was a wonderful devotee that also inspired me. He was in my temple cousin when I was in San Francisco, and uh, he was one of the pioneers of 
took distribution actually that was going, and that's why he was in Boston and then in London, New York, so many places inspiring and beginning getting to go to this, um, going in this situation. And he preached. He was a great preacher. He preached in Renjan Swami level while he was there in Boston. And uh, everything came out wonderful. And Maharaj sincere, sincere endeavor to search for the father he became an ideal man. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, should we read the last? Prabhu, is this the last letter? Giridhan Prabhu? Uh, yes, Prabhu, this is the last letter. I think that's the last one as far as I know. Oh, yeah. This is one more. Yeah, this I don't have them in front of me, so. Yeah, yeah, this is the last one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, anything in particular, Pritray Prabhu, about Boston you uh, like you have to say? Yeah, it just it's very clear. It's it's, uh, it's it's one of the two main university cities, one of many university cities in America, and it's probably one. Of, it's it's definitely the oldest, and then some of the most prestigious Harvard, MIT, you know, the Boston University, some of the most prestigious universities in the country, and I'm sure. And Prophet said it looked very clearly that we should recruit uh, intelligent men from the universities, men and women from the universities. So that's what she, that in book distribution, book distribution to the students, and book distribution in general in, in the whole city area. Those are, that's what Prophet emphasized in, uh, in the letters and being ideal examples. That's, that's what. Prophet emphasized and instructed in those letters to me, at least. So I think for Boston, that's that's a priority. Stewarding the Sri Prabhupada's books and, and preaching at the universities. That, and worshipping Sri Sri Radha Kopi Bhallava. Very nice. Those are the, those are, that's the essence of the whole of our process or mission. So I think that came, came, comes through clearly in the letters from Shiva Prabhupada. Yeah, I was fortunate because at that time you could still, the Pit Temple Pagan, I could still write letters personally to Shiva Prabhupada, you could post personally. And it became more and more um, distant. And it was more and more probably receiving primarily the GBC. Not as much with the presence. Oh, another interesting thing about that, I think it's not the first letter, but the letter before that one probably said that we'll be waiting for you, we'll be uh, for the Mayako Festival, because that the next that same year, that was in February 74, so that same year, just a month, a month later, is the, it wasn't the first Gorp winning festival, it was the first inter, international Gorp winning festival, because the one before that, it was just the devotees published the cycle to were in India with him that, that participated in 72 and 73, but in 74 was the first time he actually invited all, at least temple presidents, devotees from, especially from America, Europe, to come. And I remember we had, we had an old airplane lift, Air India flight lift. There's primarily all devotees. And it was, it was, uh, it was difficult that that first year. I think we all got sick. I came back to Boston. Nobody had been here to remember. No, there were no Indian devotees. There was no one had been Indian the year before. And uh, I came back after that festival. Uh, I lost about 20 pounds uh, in one month. And I'm already very skinny by nature. So devotees were kind of shocked. Nobody, after that, nobody asked me to go to India. It was. Uh, because it was quite austere in those days. Because Prabhupada had just, had just, they were still building the very first building. It wasn't even completed, just the first couple of floors. That, that building where Prabhupada's room is in, in Mayapur uh, was the first building. And it wasn't connected to anything else. There was nothing else there except that one building. <laughs> it's hard to imagine now. But he wanted very much that devotees go there once a year to become recharged in Krishna consciousness and uh, 
and had an experience on the Holy Downs. But like I said, in the first year, it was quite a year that it was. And we can imagine that Odis actually started there in 72. How austere it was. It was already quite austere when we got there in 74. And, uh, but it was just the beginning of the Mayapur project, and which was so dear to God. So that was the first first sign of the, the beginning of the Mayapur project. And Prophet said, we'll be waiting for you all the temple peasants to come for that festival. So, so many of us came and uh, had our first experience in India and the Holy Dhams. From Mayapur, then we went to Gandhali, which was even more austere. <laughs> and uh, we're all sleeping on hay bales, piles of straw, in that kind of tent. And um, it's, it's far different from what you see now. But that became because probably in, in America, the emphasis was all on book distribution. And, uh, and so we all busy absorbed in that service because we knew from Prabhupada that it was most, most dear to him. And then we were hearing something about uh, projects in India and it was just beginning, so it was, it was quite new. No one really imagined the projects that Prabhupada had in, had in mind for India. And now also in India, of course, the biggest field of book distribution in the world now as well. So those are the primary activities and then the service to share the problem in those days and, and still today. Okay. I think I have to I have to take leave. Thank you very much, Dray Prabhu. Please excuse me because we had, when I made the date for this day, this time, I was supposed to have been back here I think yesterday, actually, the day before yesterday. And, that was, and some things happened, things changed, and then I just got back today. And then today happens to be the biggest day of traffic in the Italy of the whole year. So we got caught, it took us about seven hours, what normally would take three hours. So we got back <sighs> a little exhausted, a little disoriented. I drove the whole time. No worries, uh, Prabhu. Uh... I, hope, I, hope, I hope I was able to, to give a little indication of, of the meaning of these letters from Shiva Prabhupada, instructions he gave, the instructions, as you know, that most important instructions are in Shiva Prabhupada's books, Bhagavad Gita, Shiva Bhagavad Gita, and the Great and to the Ocean, but um, also these letters are important to, to, as long as we take them in, in context, take them out of context, but take them within the context, and that's quite interesting here, from those devotees who receive those letters, what the context was, and I hope I was able to give some idea of the context, the situation at that time, that those letters were written by Sri Prabhupada. Okay. Thank you, Trey Prabhu. I, uh, I really okay. appreciate your time. I know um, how, how difficult it is, especially for the preacher like you. Uh, you have been traveling. Prabhu was traveling for almost seven hours, um, and still he was able to spare his time. Unfortunately, I mean, it didn't, things didn't go well according to the plan. So that is why he was not able to join Trey Prabhu. But Trey Prabhu, on behalf of entire Iskon Boston, we would really appreciate uh, taking out this time. And I, even while driving, at least you could share something. This really means a lot to us. You you don't even imagine, Prabhu, how much how much we actually cherish this particular association of yours on the phone and all the memories whatever you have shared just now is actually a hidden treasure it's a ne nectar for all of us thank you very very much the words thank